Isomers. Isomer comes from the Greek words isos and meros. It means having equal parts. You may recall from chemistry that isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but different chemical structures. For example, consider N-butane and I-butane. Both of them have four carbon atoms and ten hydrogen atoms. But the arrangement of these atoms is different, resulting in different compounds. In mechanisms, we also have isomers. And in these cases, they contain the same number of links, but are connected differently to produce unique motions. So consider that there is only one four link, one degree of freedom isomer, because there's only one way in which four links can be connected to produce a one degree of freedom mechanism. And that one way is shown here at the right. We have a one down here at the bottom where we have the ground link, a two for the link here, a three for the link at the upper middle, and a four for the link on the right. There's only one way in which these links can be combined to create a one degree of freedom mechanism. Now some of you may be saying, well what if we replaced or switched links two and three? Well, we gotta remember that Grubler's criterion is only a function of link nodes, not link shapes or lengths. So while we could switch the links around, it is of no degree of freedom coincidence, or consequence, sorry, since by Grubler, all links of the same type are equal. This is similar to our chemistry analogy, because if we were to switch this carbon atom with this carbon atom, we wouldn't have made any difference. We still would have in butane. Consider our other unique one degree of freedom isomers. We've already seen the case of four links, and we saw that there was only one way in which four links could be combined to create a valid isomer. Now, if we have six links, there are actually two different isomers, or two different ways that six links can be combined to create a one degree of freedom mechanism. Here is one of those ways. It's called the Stevenson six bar isomer. It has one, two, three, four binary links and two ternary links. The second way is called the Watts six bar isomer. It has two binaries on the left, two binary links on the right, and two ternary links in the middle. So these are the two ways in which six links can be combined to create a one degree of freedom mechanism. And as we increase in the number of links available to us, we get a lot more valid isomers. We can assemble a set of links differently to, get, to create or to get different types of mechanisms and motions. However, not every arrangement of links is a valid mechanism. We need to ensure when we arrange our links, that we don't isolate the motion to only a part of the mechanism and build a structure with the rest. An example would be the structure that um, we created here on the left when we rearrange the Watts six bar by taking off one of the binaries that was on the left hand side and moving it to the right. What we end up with is a structural subchain on the left, which could be represented by one link. and a simple four bar chain on the right, which is um, contains all the motion for the linkage. So this would not be a valid six bar isomer. Finding valid isomers for a large number of links is quite complicated. Consider the valid one degree of freedom mechanisms that contain eight links. Just as the Stevenson six bar and the Watts six bar, many of them have binary links and ternary links, but some of them also have quaternary links. We can imagine that as we increase the number of links that we use, we could have links involved that are of higher order, for example, pentagonal or hexagonal links. It's interesting to consider how many valid isomers we can get as we increase the number of available links. And this process is still an open research question. That's the conclusion of our discussion on isomers.